Why is it important to protect your employees' hearing? I'm Jason Stahl, and we're going to find out next in the AirPro Diagnostics Garage. Employees of automotive repair shops faced with continual banging, the use of pneumatic tools, and other loud noises are particularly vulnerable to hearing loss. While hearing loss can be mitigated with earplugs and other safety PPE, OSHA estimates that more than half of U.S. manufacturing workers are not using hearing protection. Unfortunately, ignoring proper hearing protection has lifelong consequences. Team members may lose the ability to hear high-frequency sounds or understand speech, and their ability to communicate may be impaired. This hearing loss cannot be corrected through surgery or with medicine. To protect workers, OSHA requires employers to implement a hearing conservation program when the average noise exposure over eight working hours reaches or exceeds 85 decibels. Per the OSHA hearing conservation program, noise may be a problem in your workplace if employees hear ringing or humming when they leave work, must shout to be heard by a coworker an arm's length away, experience temporary hearing loss when leaving work. Recently, OSHA received a funding increase to their enforcement, which will lead to more frequent inspections and stricter penalties. This increased funding specifically includes a new focus on workplace safety. Among those issues addressed is hearing loss, which has helped spur the creation of the Midwest Regional Emphasis Program for scheduling and conducting inspections of select manufacturing industries with high hearing loss rates. Because of this emphasis, employers should take proactive steps now so they avoid the risk of heavy fines and other penalties. These steps start with noise measurement and may include the implementation of mandatory noise PPE. A hearing conservation program must also include enforcement of wearing hearing protection when noise exposure is greater than an average of 90 decibels per 8-hour day. Using it should not be optional, and the program should include training on how to wear hearing protection correctly. Measuring noise levels and workers' noise exposure is the first step toward an effective hearing conservation program. By measuring noise levels throughout your facility, you can identify which work locations have noise problems and which employees may be affected. Businesses are not technically required to do a noise evaluation unless their noise levels exceed 85 plus decibels. But without a noise evaluation, it's nearly impossible to know your levels. Workplace noise levels can be measured with sound level meters or noise dosimeters. Sound level meters measure the intensity of a sound at any given moment. With a sound level meter, it is necessary to take measurements throughout the day and in many different locations. The workday exposure is then estimated. This approach generally produces uneven results and the formulas to determine workplace exposure can be complicated. Dosimeter, on the other hand, stores noise level measurements over time, such as throughout the entire eight hour workday and provides an easily read average noise exposure. These devices are worn by an employee attached to their clothing. Since these devices travel with employees and employees are seldom in one location for an entire day, shifting locations and being involved in a variety of responsibilities, these devices produce much more useful readings. Typically, one or two employees within the same department will wear the device, which are representative of the noise levels experienced by the entire team. New readings should be taken every time there is a significant change in machinery or production process that results in increased noise levels. This information was courtesy of GMG EnviroSafe at gmgenvirosafe.com. So now you know not to write off workplace noise as no big deal. I'm Jason Stahl. Thanks for watching.